For thousands of years, Stonehenge has stood on the open plains of Wiltshire, its stones casting long shadows across time. People have always asked the same questions. Who built it? Why here? And what meaning hides within those silent circles of stone? Now modern science has begun to answer what myth and mystery could not. Ancient DNA has revealed the origins of the people who built it, uncovering a story of migration, belief, and transformation that reshaped Britain forever. We know virtually nothing about who built it, or why? Stonehenge. The Monument Beyond Time. For over five millennia, Stonehenge has defied age and weather. The circle of massive stones, some more than four meters tall and weighing up to 25 tons, stands as one of humanity's most haunting achievements. Even today, it inspires awe and a strange unease. Its builders had no wheels, no iron, no written language, yet they aligned the stones perfectly with the rising sun at midsummer and the fading light of midwinter. For centuries, people sought explanations. The Romans claimed it was older than their empire. Medieval writers spoke of giants and wizards. In later centuries, scholars imagined druids performing rites beneath the solstice sun. Archaeologists saw local farmers at work. Others suggested influence from distant lands. Excavations only deepened the mystery. Tools were found, polished to perfection. Burial mounds lined with the stars. The site seemed not random, but deliberate. A message carved into the earth. The question was never only how they built it, but who they were. Were they the descendants of Britain's Ice Age hunters, or travellers from across the sea? The stones remained silent for ages, until DNA broke that silence. Unlocking the dead. The breakthrough did not begin with shovels, but in laboratories. From graves around Stonehenge and southern England, scientists extracted ancient bones and teeth, remains of farmers who lived between 4000 and 2500 BC. To the naked eye, they were only fragments, but within them, strands of DNA had survived the ages. For decades, such traces were unreadable. But with new sequencing technology, scientists could now piece together the genetic code letter by letter. They hoped to trace where the people of Stonehenge came from. The results indicate a predominant ancestry linked to Mediterranean Anatolian farmers. Their DNA did not match Britain's earlier hunter-gatherers who had lived here since the Ice Age. Those ancient Britons had dark hair, dark eyes, and deep European roots. The Stonehenge people were different. Their genetic signal pointed towards the Mediterranean and Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, where farming first began nearly 9,000 years ago. These were descendants of the world's first farmers, who learned to plant crops raise animals, and shape the land. Over centuries, they moved westward, carrying seeds, tools, and a new way of life. They believed in cycles, day and night, birth and death, sowing and harvest, and saw the heavens as guides. When they reached Britain's shores, they brought that vision with them and built it into stone. The revelation was stunning. The Stonehenge builders were migrants, dreamers, and innovators whose journey began far away. Their blood carried the memory of the first civilizations, and their monuments carried that memory into eternity. The Great Migration. Following their DNA trail takes us on a journey across continents. From Wiltshire, it leads back through France and Spain to the rugged hills of Anatolia. There, humanity's great shift began when survival became farming, and farming became culture. From Anatolia, waves of people spread across Europe. One branch travelled north through the Balkans, another followed the Mediterranean coast through Italy, Spain, and Portugal. In Iberia, they built villages and tombs, raised stone circles, and watched the sky for meaning. Centuries later, their descendants crossed the channel to Britain. Around 4000 BC, they arrived on a land of forest and marsh, still home to roaming bands of hunter-gatherers. They brought seeds of wheat and barley, cattle and goats, and the knowledge of how to settle. They also brought a belief that the land could be sacred that stone and soil could hold memory. Their ideas took root. Fields replaced the forest. Villages replaced camps. And from their rituals, a new form of architecture emerged, one meant to endure. Stonehenge would become the symbol of that transformation, a monument born of migration and vision, not isolation. The End of the Hunters 
Before peasants, Britain was wild. Forests covered much of the island. Rivers teemed with fish. Small groups of hunters followed herds and seasons. They lived as their ancestors had for millennia. When the Neolithic farmers arrived, the balance shifted. With polished stone axes, they cleared trees and opened fields. They raised livestock, built homes, and settled in one place. The rhythm of life changed from wild to ordered. But the story hidden in DNA shows something harsh. Intermixing appears limited in current datasets. Their presence declines markedly in the record. The farmers became Britain's people. Their culture defined its future. Their faith in cycles of life and death gave rise to the first major stone monuments. It was their hands, not the hunters, that shaped Stonehenge, a declaration of a new world. Building the Sacred Circle When the Anatolian descended farmers settled in Britain, they reshaped the land. They cleared forests, sowed crops, and built homes. They began to honor the dead with long barrows, earthen tombs that linked family, ancestry, and land. These were more than graves. They were symbols of memory. As generations passed, wooden circles appeared, timber rings aligned with the rising and setting sun. They became gathering sites for rituals, marking seasons and harvests. Around 3000 BC, builders made the leap from wood to stone. They raised local sarsens from the chalk downs and hauled smaller bluestones from Wales, nearly 155 miles away. The bluestones we know for sure were brought a long way. They were brought from Wales to Stonehenge. The effort required immense labor and precise design. The stones were shaped, balanced, and arranged to frame the solstices. Stonehenge was both a temple and a timepiece, connecting heaven and earth. Builders understood cycles, planting, reaping, life, death. The monument embodied those rhythms and Stonehenge was not alone. Across Europe, similar megaliths stood in Spain, Portugal, and Brittany. DNA links show that these communities were connected by shared ancestry and belief. Around Stonehenge, an entire sacred landscape formed. To the northeast lay Durrington Walls, a vast timber site where feasts were held during the winter solstice. Nearby stood Woodhenge, aligned like its stone counterpart. A ceremonial path called the Avenue led from Stonehenge to the River Avon. Processions likely moved from the lively gatherings of Durrington to the solemn stones, symbolizing life's passage to death. Stonehenge was the center of this cosmic design, a network where architecture, astronomy, and faith became one. The Second Wave Time moved on. Around 2450 BC, a new people appeared in Britain, the Beaker culture, named for their bell-shaped pottery. They brought copper and gold, weapons, and new burial customs. Their world valued the individual more than the community. Within a few generations, the DNA of the Stonehenge farmers nearly vanished. The Beaker people replaced them, both genetically and culturally. This was not just a change, it was a transformation. A new Britain was born, yet Stonehenge remained. The stones stood unchanged as bloodlines shifted. The monument became a silent witness to vanished people and their dreams carved in rock. When stone became memory, though their builders were gone, Stonehenge endured. In the Bronze Age, the newcomers buried their dead near it, seeking a connection to its ancient power. Centuries later, the Celtic tribes folded it into myth. They imagined gods or giants raising the stones. Druidic priests performed rites there, marking solstices and seasons keeping alive the old rhythm of earth and sky. Through the ages, Stonehenge became more than a monument. It became a memory. The belief that the cosmos could be mirrored on earth survived even as languages changed and empires rose and fell. Today, crowds still gather at midsummer dawn to watch the sun rise between its stones, just as its builders intended 5,000 years ago. Stonehenge in the modern eye. Now Stonehenge is ancient and alive. It draws millions from around the world. 1.3 million in 2023 alone. Stonehenge is a world heritage site. Uh, it's known throughout the world. On an average summer day, we get about 6,000 people. And throughout the year, we can be looking at upwards of a million people visiting the site. A 36% jump as travel revived after the pandemic. It remains the most visited paid attraction in Southwest England, with a modern visitor centre opened in 2013, serving as a gateway between the present and the past. Some see it as sacred ground. Modern druids and pagans celebrate their own on solstice mornings. Others come as tourists or artists seeking connection or inspiration. Stonehenge is a museum, a pilgrimage, 
and a mystery all at once. Its power lies in how it bridges time, where science meets spirit and imagination meets memory. The Legacy Written in DNA, the story revealed by genetics transforms how we see this monument. The builders were not isolated islanders. They were travelers whose ancestors came from Anatolia, carrying the world's first seeds and the dream of order shaped by sun and soil. They replaced the old hunters, created new rituals, and built a circle to mirror the heavens. Centuries later, they were replaced in turn by new peoples, but their idea remained. Stonehenge stands as proof that ideas outlast empires. That belief can be built into the world. It is the echo of a people who crossed continents to mark the rhythm of the sky upon the earth. Their DNA may have vanished, but their vision never did. The stones still catch the sunrise, the same light that once guided their hands. What surprised you most about this DNA discovery? Share your thoughts in the comments. Comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep looking to the past for the stories written in stone.